Hello everyone. So this is the part 6 of our series of discussions about group theory where in this part we will be discussing very briefly what is homogeneous Lorentz group. And as what I've said, this is just uh, about insights on homogeneous Lorentz group. So the mathematical equations are not that very deep. But if you have some questions regarding the mathematical formulas or regarding the derivation of certain mathematical equations, please comment your questions in our comment section so that I can provide a more detailed explanation about the derivation of this certain mathematical formulations. So homogeneous Lorentz group actually includes space rotations and Lorentz transformations. These are very useful, especially in modern physics, where we are, we are dealing with inertial frames, we are dealing with special relativity by Albert Einstein. Okay, so um, as we know, Lorentz transformations are linear, not only in space coordinates xi, but also in time. So as we know, we have this uh, space coordinates. Okay, so suppose this is the x-axis, this is the y-axis, and this is the z-axis. The drawing is not so good, but basically now the angle between this x and y is 90 degrees. We have uh, y, z is also 90 degrees, and this is also 90 degrees. It leaves the quadratic equation equal to this mathematical formulation invariant. And in our previous lectures, we explained what an invariant is. Now we see that this is unchanged no, for, for uh, certain transformations. So if we have um, a three-dimensional coordinate system, for example, and then we rotate this one. If the Hamiltonian in our example in the Schrodinger equation remains unchanged, it means that it's invariant. Okay, where we have XO implies that uh, they are the same with uh, X sub O in a sense that it is equal to C times T, where as we know here, especially in special relativity, we have C is the speed of light. And so this is the speed of light. Now define, or we define here x to be equal to uh, x sub o, x1, x2, x3, and so on. And we have uh, x3. Anyway, we are only on, on, on four dimensions. So basically, we are up to x3. And we have uh, x prime is just the prime coordinates you know, of, of our uh, coordinate system, which are the space-time coordinates of all inertial frames. With x defined as c times t, or the speed of light times time, we can actually have this following um, linear equations. Okay, we have x prime uh, zero, or x to the pro x to the prime zero, uh, equals gamma x to the zero minus beta times gamma x to the one. We have x prime to the one equals negative beta gamma times uh, x prime or x1 plus gamma x to the zero. And we have x prime to the two equals x to the two. And we have x prime to the three equals x to the three. Now, as you notice, I am not reading this one as x squared because basically this is not x squared because we are dealing with coordinate systems here now. So, uh, if we have here the three-dimensional coordinate system, maybe we can call the uh, x-axis as x1. Maybe we can call the y-axis as, okay, we have x2. And we have the z-axis as maybe uh, x3. Uh, so this is the notation that we chose. But obviously, we can always choose x, y, and z as well. And this is for the space coordinates. We can also have this space-time coordinate, no? where we have, for example, we have the x-axis. No? So maybe you can call this one as x1. We have the y-axis, which we can call as x to the 2. And we have here the time, where we can just call this one as maybe x to the 0. So obviously, x to the 0 here doesn't mean that this is equal to 1. No? Because as we know, any number raised to 0 is equal to 1, but basically this is not. Uh, this is not the typical mathematical uh, exponent that leads our variable equal to 1. Where here we have beta is equal to 
v, this is the, the velocity no? over c. This is actually just the ratio of any velocity okay, and the speed of light. And we have gamma is equal to 1 over the square root of 1 minus beta squared. In special relativity, it's required that in any inertial frame whose coordinates are xi prime that moves with velocity that is less than or equal to c in any direction relative to the xi system and has the same origin at t is equal to zero, we have c squared t prime squared or t prime to the two equals x1 prime squared plus x2 prime squared plus x3 prime squared holds also. So we have this one. Uh, we have here the rotated coordinate. Uh, we have x prime to the zero, x prime one, x prime two, or, or to the second order, we have x prime to the third order, or uh, x prime to the three. Uh, as what I've said, these are the coordinates, so that is why we are not reading it as x squared and so on. So this is actually just equal to this matrix. Uh, this is our uh, matrix operator which is given by gamma, negative beta, gamma, zero, zero, and so on. Times are uh, unrotated coordinate, okay, or uh, unchanged coordinate. We have x to the zero, x to the one, x to the two, and we have x to the three. And because the Lorentz factor is always greater than or equal to one, we can define a hyperbolic angle denoted by, um, what is this, by rho, that is we have a gamma is equal to the hyperbolic cosine of rho, and beta is equal to the hyperbolic tangent of rho. And obviously, we can see, you know, we can see in our previous uh, slide that gamma equals one minus the square one over the square root of one minus beta squared. So obviously, if we're going to multiply here, gamma times beta. Okay, gamma times beta. This is actually just equal to the hyperbolic sign of our uh, hyperbolic angle rho. Uh, because basically, um, beta is tangent or, or um, what is this? Uh, hyperbolic tangent, but as we know, the hyperbolic tangent is sine, hyperbolic sine over the hyperbolic cosine no, of our rho. So basically, if you multiply our gamma and beta, cosine, cos or the hyperbolic cosine of rho will be cancelled out. So this implies, or this gives us uh, x prime to the zero, equals x to the zero hyperbolic cosine of rho minus x prime uh, hyperbolic sine, uh, x to the one hyperbolic sine of rho. We have x prime uh, to the one equals negative x to the one hyperbolic sine of rho plus x to the zero, okay, uh, hyperbolic cosine of rho. We have x prime to the two, equals uh, x to the 2 and we have x prime to the 3 equals uh, x to the 3. But obviously, if we, um, if we rewrite this one in terms of matrix, we can have this one. Now we have cos, we have negative sine, a hyperbolic sine. Okay, then we have negative hyperbolic sine, we have a hyperbolic cosine, and so on. And of course, everything else here will be zero. We have here one because we have uh, x to the two, uh, and we have here another one for x to the three. And this is multiplied to our unchanged uh, coordinates, x to the zero, x to the one, x to the two, and we have x to the three. So that is for our homogeneous uh, Lorentz transformation. Okay, basically we will uh, be extending our discussions about this one, okay? when we tackle the Minkowski space, which deals with uh, four vectors or four dimensional space, uh, space time, no? coordinates. So if you have, again, if you have questions or clarifications, you can type your comments in or, or questions in our comment section. Thank you so much.